This is what my kitchen looked like 13 years ago when we moved in. Stinky brown cabinets. We replaced them with not quite so attractive cabinets. Got a new floor and this is what it looks like today. It's been a transformation. This video is being sponsored by Beyond Paint. I did decide to go with bright white paint and I think it looks fantastic. I'm not even waiting until the end to show you the reveal. I'm showing you now because I'm so excited. And I want you to know if you're watching this video and you've got dark cabinets, you've got an outdated kitchen and you really wanna make it look great, you don't have to spend a lot of money. All you need really is just a couple quarts of paint. You just need some time and you can make it happen. So I'm gonna walk you through everything that I did, the things that worked, the things that didn't work, <laughs> the things that were frustrating, the paint that I used, which again, we're using Beyond Paint Ultra White. And I'm gonna tell you the reason why I went with white, which partly was because of these countertops. I did not wanna spend a lot of money redoing everything in the kitchen. So sometimes you gotta work with what you've got, right? All right, let's jump into this project right now. Now, whenever you're painting your kitchen cabinets or even your vanity cabinets, it's so tempting to just leave them up and paint them while they're in place. I get it, I've been there. I have made that lazy mistake before, but this time around, I wasn't going to take any shortcuts because in my experience, I've learned that the prep that you put into it is what you're gonna get out of it. And so I took all of the hardware down, I put them in baggies so I didn't lose any of the hinges or the screws and made sure that we were gonna do this right, which was starting by just removing as much as you can. Now, you're gonna have to figure out where you're actually going to put your cabinet doors while you're doing all your cleaning and priming of the boxes. And we'll talk about that in just a moment, but you're gonna to wanna to make sure you clean these properly. So I did use a steam cleaner I also used Simple Green. You wanna get all of that grease and debris off of those cabinet boxes because if you're painting over that, it's not going to stick and you will get some chips and, and problems later. So don't skip this part. Now I did skip removing the things inside of my cabinets. That was the lazy girl in me. <laughs> now sanding, I decided that I was going to try to sand but it started creating too much dust and I figured I was going to be priming anyway and so I just decided, you know what, we're just gonna skip sanding. The primer that I use, you can find it in the blog post, but it is an extreme bond primer. So it said that I didn't have to even sand. And I wanted to prime these because these cabinets are very, very dark. And you'll see here with just even one coat of primer, it wasn't enough. I ended up having to do about two or three coats of primer just to cover the dark cabinet. So if you have dark cabinets, plan to do extra coating of the primer. And this is really important when you're going from dark cabinets to a light or white paint. If you're going to do a dark color, it's not really as important. You could do a coat of primer and you know one coat would probably be enough, but going from dark to light, you really have to add lots of coats to cover all that dark wood coming through. And here's what I found. When I was using a small roller, it seemed like the paint went on with a, a very thin coat, which then caused more of that wood to show through. So I switched to a paintbrush and I was able to get a little bit of a thicker coat of the primer so that there was more coverage. I felt that I had to do less coats of primer when I used a paintbrush versus going at it with a roller. So if you do one coat with the paintbrush and then go over it with a small roller, then the coverage was better. And so I started working in that manner. And at this point, I still wasn't sure what color I was gonna do for the bottom cabinets, if I was gonna do all white or not. Standing back, taking a look at the white of, of the three coats that I did of the primer, I really liked it, but I still wasn't sure. Anyway, it was time to do the bottom, and this is where I was gonna have to remove some of the drawers. Well, after removing one, I was like, you know what, this is too much of a hassle to <laughs> remove all of these drawers. So you'll see that some of the drawers I removed and some of them, I just left them in place and just primed around them. These ones here, I was like, I'm not taking these out. I'm just gonna have to work around it. And so that's what I did. And you see here that I am using the brush to spread it. I, I did find that the coverage was just much better with a paintbrush. You see here with a roller, it's, it's still coming through. So just plan to do probably about three coats. Now I did clean these with a steam cleaner first and then I was not sure if I was gonna sand them. I did try sanding them and I thought, look, I've got 26 cabinet doors here. If I sand every one of them, this is gonna be a lot of work. <laughs> I don't wanna do this. Well, when I wiped them down and did the Extreme Bond primer, I did find that I didn't really have to sand them as long as they were clean. So you wanna make sure that you really spend a lot of time doing that. And I did notice later that 
it was going to be easier for me to use a paint sprayer. So I had to mix in some water. I will leave a link up there in the corner and in the description on how to use a paint sprayer, but you really have to make sure that you're adding a lot of water so that you have the right viscosity. And there's a little cup that comes with it. So the, the paint has to go through within a certain number of seconds to make sure you have the right viscosity of the paint of the primer so that you can easily spray these. Now, in order to spray cabinets with primer, you have to have the space to do this. And most likely you're gonna have to be outdoors. You don't wanna do this indoors because of the overspray. So you wanna make sure you're not having too much of a windy day, the temperature has to be right. So it's, you know, it just depends. You wanna make sure that the setting is right. The spray is not going to be too much. So do a test, make the adjustments. Once you think you've got a good spray pattern, then you can do your cabinet doors. And I was amazed at how quickly <laughs> it went. And it was, it was very, very smooth, which I liked. And I was able to get it done so much quicker. And I think I did, I think I did two coats. Keep in mind that you're gonna wanna have probably two hours of drying time in between those coats, and then you have to flip them over and do the backside. So this is probably gonna take maybe a weekend, maybe a little bit more. So once all the cabinets were dried with the primer, it was time to move on to the Beyond Paint. Now, if you wanna use Beyond Paint and a paint sprayer, you can. Look at the instructions down below in the blog post for more information, but we're gonna be using a paintbrush and a roller. I'll be using a four inch, quarter inch nap roller. This is great for getting a nice uniform textured look. If you want something that's like completely smooth, then yes, a paint sprayer can work, but we're, we're going for a little bit of texture here. Now with the paint roller, I noticed I couldn't get into a lot of the peaks and valleys of my cabinet doors. So instead of doing this, I actually switched to using a paintbrush first, and that would get the paint into the hills, the valleys, the nooks, the crannies, just kind of smush it into the corners there, <laughs> and then use that roller, the quarter inch nap roller, to smooth everything out. And when it dries, I mean, it's just this beautiful textured finish. You're not gonna get the brush strokes. And honestly, with Beyond Paint, you don't have to sand and you don't have to prime. The reason I primed is because I knew that these cabinets were dark and the darker your cabinets, the darker the wood, you're gonna have to do multiple coats. I'd much rather use multiple coats when it's a primer and then just do two coats of the Beyond Paint. So keep that in mind. I've done many of projects where I didn't sand or prime using Beyond Paint and it turns out great. But again, dark cabinets, definitely use the primer. I wanna point out that when you're painting your kitchen cabinets white or a light color, you will see these gaps and cracks that were not noticeable before because you had wood there. So have some molding and trim caulk available, have a caulk gun. Don't cut the hole too big because you don't want all of this globby stuff all over your cabinets. Just a really small hole, keep your finger wet, remove the excess, and it should look really good and seamless. And you're gonna wanna do this for your cabinet doors as well. You know, the cabinet doors where the mitered corners are, you might see some small gaps and cracks there. And again, before you do the Beyond Paint, this is after the primer, before the Beyond Paint, you wanna just put a dab of the caulking there as well let it dry and then do your two coats of Beyond Paint. But yeah, I kind of missed that part. <laughs> but this will make it look nice and clean and uh, it'll look professional. It'll look like you knew what you were doing. All right, so when it was time to use the Beyond Paint on the frames, the cabinet frames, I did the same approach. I used a paintbrush to apply it and then I went over it with the quarter inch nap roller and smooth everything out. Again, you don't wanna see the brush strokes. You will get a little bit of texture, but I like that. Now, remember I was asking you if you like the Nantucket? Well, this is what the Nantucket looked like. I actually didn't care for it with this countertop. And so to keep this project within a reasonable amount of money, I just went with white because it looked best with my countertop. It was not going to force me to make an, an entire kitchen remodel part of this project. And so, I like the way it turned out. So after I did two coats of Beyond Paint, then it was time to move on to the sealer. This is a very important step of this project. This is what I like about Beyond Paint is because they do offer a multi-purpose sealer that you can use for extra durability. Now there's already sealer in Beyond Paint, but something like kitchen cabinets that people are touching all the time, you want to add some additional durability and protection. So it's gonna go on milky, but it does dry clear, so don't be alarmed. <laughs> and I applied it pretty much the same way. I had to wait 24 hours 
actually. So make sure that your paint dries 24 hours. And then I went with a paintbrush to apply it, getting it into all the crevices and then followed up with the roller to even it out and make sure everything was just, you know, completely uniform. And it dried really nicely. It felt good. Here's the thing. In terms of how long it takes to bond and cure and all that, it takes seven days for Beyond Paint to fully bond to your cabinets and then 29 days for it to fully cure. So keep that in mind. You just want to be very careful with your cabinets during that time while everything's still processing. I did one coat. You can do multiple coats. I think I'm actually going to go back in some areas that I think are more high traffic and apply another coat. And that's just going to make it more durable. I've got three teenagers. They like to slam cabinets, open cabinets, close. I mean, always looking for food and snacks. And so I want to make sure that this is going to last and and not be something that I have to do, you know, every six months. So again, with the other cabinets, you see that I'm applying it in pretty much the same way. I love that it had a nice sheen to it. I like that little bit of sheen and reflection because I think it just makes my my kitchen feel brighter and lighter. And I have to admit, I was a little nervous about hanging everything back up because I had kind of lost track of which cabinets go where. <laughs> and so I just had to, you know, kind of figure out, oh, this one probably goes here. And you notice that by taking the cabinets off and painting them, the hardware just looks so much better. So if you're thinking of doing this project, don't be lazy. Take the cabinets off. I know it's a little bit of a, a nightmare to have to put everything back together again. But when you're putting things back together, here's what could happen. When you go to put your cabinets on, they could be crooked. And there are some adjustments that you have to make. There's three different points where you can move it from side to side, you can move it up and down, and you can move it out and back. And so making those three adjustments with a screwdriver will allow you to properly align your cabinets and put them back together. And you'll notice that I use the same hardware. I didn't buy new hardware because that's more money. And the silver worked. It doesn't have to be super modern, super awesome. It just has to be clean and it has to work. And the trash cabinet needed to get painted as well. So I used an oil-based spray primer on that and it looked much better. I mean, it was so full of food stains. It was so nasty. So let's take a look at what this kitchen looked like before. Remember, this is what it looked like when we moved in in 2010. It looks like they tried to do some updates to the floor. We pulled out the old stinky cabinets, put new cabinets, but they were too dark. And now they're white. And I know some of you said you love white cabinets. Some of you said white is so boring. But I will tell you, I don't feel that there's anything boring about this kitchen. It feels good to me. And if something feels good to you when you walk into it, it's not boring. It can be simple. Simple doesn't have to be boring, especially if you walk in and you don't feel stressed. You feel like it's clean, it's light, it's bright. That's a dramatic difference. And I'm so thankful to do this project. Now, I still need to build a base cabinet there next to the refrigerator, but at least I could paint it. And I did so that it's not such an eyesore. The rug was $100 I got from home goods and the kitchen island I got from Ikea for like $400. I did get the stools from Facebook Marketplace for $50 each. So total, I would say I spent probably about $550 on those things. And then on the paint, uh, which was provided by Beyond Paint, they sponsored this project. You see that beautiful sheen. I didn't have to pay for the paint, but I did pay for the primer and I did pay for some other supplies. But if you were doing this project on your own, you could probably expect to spend anywhere from $300 to $500 on paint supplies. And it depends on what you have already in your arsenal. I still have things I have to do in this kitchen. I do want to do a tiled backsplash, but I just didn't have time to get it done this month. Now, if you're tackling a project like this, all you have to do is go down below, click the link for the blog post, the complete full step-by-step -step on how I did this, things that you need to consider, a list of materials that I used, and also the link for where you can buy Beyond Paint. You can actually get it online from homedepot.com and some other places online. And if you enjoyed this project, guess what? I've got a podcast. Did you know that I have a podcast that I publish every single week? Well, I usually don't skip any episodes, but sometimes it happens. There's like 125, if not more, episodes that you could be listening to right now 
where you get your podcasts. So come and join the conversation. Sometimes we're talking in depth about projects behind the scenes. Sometimes I'm sharing tips and tricks and tools with you. And I want to continue the conversation with you. So go find Thrift Diving Podcast, subscribe, show up weekly, and let's have a conversation. And let me know down in the comments, did you like this project? Do you like white cabinets? Or do you think I should have gone in a different direction? Now that you see the final finished, well, it's not completely finished. Remember, I got to get backsplash and a lot of other things. But let me know, do you like this kitchen makeover? Or do you think I should have gone in a different direction with the kitchen cabinets? Let me know down below. I'll see you next video.